Welcome back to Critter College. Last episode, we talked about habitats, where a creature lives, and all the things that a critter might encounter in their day-to-day -day lives while living there. We focused on our mammals, Gary, George, Hannah, and Ralphie. Now, let's learn about the environments of some of the other species in Critter Corner, ones that need a little heat in their habitat to keep them comfortable. Let's meet them. Our next critter's oldest ancestors date back to 220 million years ago. As a species, they are one of the oldest reptiles on the planet Earth. Who could it be? Not sure? Well, here's another hint. Throughout its millions of years of evolution, these creatures have always had a shell for protection. Any guesses? You're right, it's a turtle. Everyone please welcome Tommy the turtle. Tommy is a box turtle and lives his life partially on land and partially in water. Box is kind of the wrong name for Tommy's shape. See, turtles have evolved this bowl-shaped shell over millions of years, and with millions of years on Earth to explore, it's easy to understand that turtles have adapted to every part of the world, except for regions where the weather is extremely cold. Turtles are ectothermic, or cold-blooded, and they use the heat from their environment to warm their bodies. Without a stable source of heat, a turtle's body temperature will drop, and if that cold temperature is sustained, it may make them ill. It's not uncommon to see turtles basking in the sun near bodies of water. Soaking in the sun and the heat keeps their bodies working in tip-top shape for all their hunting and swimming needs. When it comes to habitats, it's easier to study turtles once we separate them into three environmental categories, completely aquatic, semi-aquatic, and fully terrestrial or land-based living. Sea turtles live their entire lives in the salty oceans of the earth and only ever walk on land when they journey back to their birthplace to lay their eggs. They're like any beach bum in Venice Beach. They bury their eggs deep in the sandy beach and the sun's heat helps them grow. The sustained temperature of the eggs and sand will actually determine the gender of the hatchlings. Once out of their leathery egg, the hatchlings rush the beach and head as fast as their little fins can carry them to the water. The diets of sea turtles vary from carnivorous, eating only meat like crab, shrimp, fish, or other sea creatures, while others prefer a more mixed diet of seagrass, algae, and seaweed. The leatherback turtle is referred to as a gelatinovore, which sounds like they're a jello monster. Really, it means they only eat invertebrates like jellyfish and sea squirts. Semi-aquatic turtles, like Tommy, live in lakes, ponds, and rivers, and are much smaller than their sea-dwelling cousins. They're sometimes referred to as terrapins. These turtles spend their days basking in the sun and hunting for a mix of both aquatic and terrestrial plant and animal life. Grubs, snails, fruit, flowers, or even crustaceans are all on the menu. Turtles that spend the majority, if not all, of their lives on land are generally referred to as tortoises. Tortoises are found living naturally in the southern portion of North America all the way to the southern regions of South America, near and around the Mediterranean Basin, across Europe and Asia, into Sub-Saharan Africa, Madagascar, and even found their way onto some Pacific islands. Their habitats are as diverse as the lands they have occupied across the world. Tortoises live in deserts, arid grasslands, soaking wet evergreen forests, and from sea level to the tops of mountains. Not only have they adapted to almost every environment, some tortoises can live to be over a hundred years old. Now, a turtle like Tommy won't live to be over a hundred years old, but he'll have a shell life of about 25 to 35 years. Get it? <laughs> well, anyway, uh, while he's hanging out, we want to make him as happy as possible by making his enclosure the best that it can be. Start with a large fish tank or turtle tank. Add some bedding, uh, a nice place to hide, and access to a shallow pool of water where he can soak his shell. 
And here in Critter Corner, Tommy gets a regular soak to make sure his shell and skin stay nice and hydrated. His meals are a mix of plant-based and protein-based yummies for his tummy. Thanks for your help, Tommy. Well, now that Tommy's given us an introduction to reptiles, let's look at another one, Sally the California King Snake. Sally's snake ancestors have been roaming around the earth and sea for over a hundred million years. Like the turtle, they live in habitats that stretch the globe and the imagination and live on every continent except Antarctica. They live in the sea and on land, in the trees, in the ground, and even in the air. There are actually five species of gliding snakes that flatten their bodies and glide from tree to tree to hunt for lizards. All snakes are carnivorous and ectothermic, or cold-blooded, which as we know means that they use the environment to regulate their body temperature. Snakes like Sally love to bask in the California sun. In the wild, Sally and her cousins live on the west coast of the United States and reside in habitats that range from grassland, marshes, deserts, woodland chaparrals, to even urban areas. King snakes earn their title by actually hunting and eating other snakes, even the venomous rattlesnake. They do this by means of constricting their prey with their exceptionally strong body. Any animal that is smaller than them might end up as dinner. Rodents, birds, amphibians, and other reptiles are all options for the king of snakes, and their dinner needs to be smaller than the thickest part of their body. Despite their hunting prowess, king snakes like Sally are non-venomous and are practically harmless to humans, making them one of the most kept types of snakes in captivity. Ooh, that's a good squeeze, thank you. A snake enclosure should account for all of Sally's needs and should be large enough that she can encircle no more than two thirds of the perimeter. It must also be temperature controlled. Remember how Tommy was cold blooded? Well, Sally's the same and she's picky about her thermostat. One side of the enclosure should be heated to a basking temperature of 88 to 90 degrees, while the other side should remain cooler between 75 and 80 degrees. And this will allow Sally to regulate her temperature by changing sides of the enclosure as needed. And uh, remember to provide a fresh bowl of water and to keep the humidity at 50 to 60% to ensure that when the time is right, Sally won't have any trouble shedding her skin. Let's stay on this reptile train and head over to check out our friend Lenny, our resident leopard gecko. Leopard geckos are special because they have an extra adaptation that many of their relatives don't have. They have eyelids. Most other geckos lick their eyes to moisten them, but not Lenny. Eric, what are you doing? Uh, nothing, nothing really. And definitely not us humans. Lenny blinks like us. And this is a tremendous help because in the wild, the leopard gecko inhabits rocky, dry grasslands and desert regions of Pakistan, Northwest India, Afghanistan, and parts of Iran, where the differences between a meal and no meal might just be a blink of an eye. These arid and semi-arid regions are sparse of vegetation, and the leopard geckos often use rocky crevices, shallow burrows, or natural tunnels to stay out of the heat of the day and avoid predators. Maybe they could take some burrowing lessons from Hannah. When they do get hungry, crickets, small locusts, moth larvae, mealworms, grasshoppers, and even nesting mice might be on the menu. But for Lenny here at Critter Corner, we feed him six to seven large crickets or mealworms two to three times a week. Another fascinating adaptation that Lenny has developed to deal with inconsistent food in his native geographic area is that his tail stores fat. So if he ever has to go without food, his body will consume the fat stored in his tail to tide him over until he catches one of those crazy crickets. But be careful while handling your leopard gecko. If you spook them, they might drop their tail. It's a defense mechanism developed to confuse a predator into eating or biting his tail instead of you know, their soft, squishy body where all the important organs are. But if it does fall off, it's okay. Lenny's tail will grow back, but the tail will never be as large or as beautiful as the original. Like the other reptile critter enclosures, Lenny's environment is temperature and climate controlled. The humidity needs to be just right so that when ready, he'll be able to shed. 
add plenty of places to climb and hide. And with enough room for exploration, Lenny will be all set to live 10 to 20 years with us. So get used to that smiling little face. Our next critter is by far the most vocal. Well, the loudest. Let's just say the most verbally social. You guessed it. That's the sound of Carla, our cockatiel, singing her happy to see you song. I'm very happy to see you too, and the rest of the critter crew. <laughs> I'm singing in a bad Australian accent because it makes her feel right at home. These small parrots live largely in arid and semi-arid regions of Australia. They always choose to live close to water, but they'll move wherever food and water is the most readily available. And they typically live in pairs or small flocks and live to 15 to 25 years. But the oldest recorded cockatiel lived to be 36 years old. Now, enclosures at home should be at minimum 20 inches wide, 20 inches deep, and 24 inches in height. Your cage should be placed away from any doors or windows or even kitchens with strong scents. Cockatiels are extremely sensitive to overpowering smells and drafts. And be mindful of the cage bar spacing, as it needs to be narrow enough that the cockatiel can't stick their head through the bars. Also, try to find horizontal bars rather than vertical to make it easier for your bird to climb around the enclosure. Perches of various shapes, sizes, heights, and textures are great for keeping your cockatiel's feet strong and flexible. Cockatiels are extremely curious and intelligent, so providing a collection of toys is a great way to keep them happy and mentally stimulated. And cockatiel's metabolic rate is extremely high, so your bird or birds will need access to fresh water and food at all times. And just be sure to mount your bird's food on the side of the cage and not on the ground. And this will help reduce stress and help your bird feel safe while they're eating. And let's also remember that all critters have different sleep schedules and some need to nap periodically during the day. It looks like it might be nap time for our rambunctious bird. Let's take this chance and whisper a goodbye to all of the critters and thank them for their help. Thank you. Until next time, friends. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to visit our website, annenbergpetspace.org, for craft ideas, games, and of course, cat and dog adoptions. Be sure to subscribe and post any questions in the comments. Well, I hope you enjoyed exploring the habitats of our Critter Corner friends.